think we'll just jump right into it. Um, I'm basically giving you guys a 30,000 foot overview of Mastercam's Swiss solution and, and how we utilize certain things, how we do certain things, um, and just a general look at what Mastercam is doing today. Most of the, if not all of the Swiss machines utilize some sort of setup variable, setup statements at the beginning of every program. And inside of Mastercam Lathe, we utilize uh, Lathe Stock Advance for these settings. Now keep in mind, Swiss is not its own product. Swiss runs inside of Mastercam Lathe. So if you're currently using Mastercam Mill and Lathe, you have the software you need. The only thing you're really purchasing is a dedicated post processor for your individual type of machine. So this is important to, to realize and to remember because you're not learning a whole new piece of software or a whole new product. You've already been using Lathe and Mill. You're just utilizing the changes we've made to Swiss machines inside of the post. So as you can see on my slide here, we have a lot of different ways of doing things. And, and what you see here is two different examples of programming a part for two same machines, but with different programming styles. So the top SR20R3 star machine utilizes four variables to get this machine going. Stock diameter, cutoff RPM, cutoff feed, and a Z1 start position. And we populate these variables and we use a switch here on the, on the left-hand side. We can set this switch to M98, P9810, which is this safe cutoff that STAR used to use on older machines. Uh, some people still use it on newer machines, but it's since been replaced with the G266. So we can also set this variable to a one and output G266 commands, which would be everything other than the four circled here. So if we look at the bottom image, we have a lot more variables, right? So even though your company may have an older star machine that programs this way and a newer star machine that programs this way, we just make the switch and you're purchasing one post for this, that same style of machine. And the post looks at whether this switch is a zero or a one to output the code entirely differently. So kind of a, a neat way of doing things, right? You're not buying two posts, you're buying one. When it comes to all the people out there, and it sounds like it's the majority on this call uh, who have citizen machines, we handle all of your MC data in this custom parameter setting inside of Lathe Stock Advance. So here we populate these fields and we output MC data with the proper code that you would need. And this is how it looks inside of a program. We come up to the end of our $2 program and we have $0 with our MC data. Um, we have ways, uh, I know there are some citizens out there, newer citizens that have more variables than what we can handle in here. We basically can handle 20 variables in custom parameters. Uh, if your citizen is one of those machines that has 25 or 26 variables, we have ways of pulling information from other areas um, so that we can populate them all. Uh, it is something that I'm looking at seeing if we can get a change in upcoming Mastercam versions to give us more usability here inside of custom parameters. If you happen to be running Sugami, here's a look at a Sugami lathe stock advance for the startup uh, parameters. You have a safe bark diameter. You have a cutoff station number, so we have to tell it whether it's uh, tool nine or tool 17 or tool 27, wherever your cutoff resides on a Sugami, it needs to know that. Uh, if you have a Sugami with laser attachment on it for laser cutting, we can also handle laser settings. So we use the use of a laser variable. We set this to a one, it says yes. And then we output all of the variables that your laser would need to use. Most, Typical Swiss machines, most of your typical gang machines uh, are two path, head one, head two, dollar one, dollar two, channel one, channel two, whatever you guys decide to call them. Uh, how do we decipher when we're programming a part where each 
set of codes goes. Does it go to head one or does it go to head two? Well, if you're familiar with Mastercam lathe, you're going to use axis combinations just like you would in Mastercam lathe for your lathe machines. This is a generic look of axis combination. You have main gang, back block, and back block with Y axis. On your lathes, you would see right upper, right lower, left upper, left lower. So by using axis combinations as we're programming a part, we can dictate where that code goes. We are not stuck to these generic names. We can rename these, as you can see here, into separate, we can create new ones, we can rename them. Um, we have a lot of control over what we do with access combinations to make your job easier. Uh, if you look at a citizen where you have a gang tool post, a back tool post, and then the front tool post for drilling, uh, you know, that's about the minimum. But maybe you have a citizen type 12 with a B axis head, and you have all of these extra attachments that can do certain certain operations that aren't typical. Um, maybe you have an attachment with front and back drillings, uh, a drilling station for main and sub spindle. Well, we can add a axis combination like we did here for a star where we were programming the main tool post, but we're using the part in the sub spindle. So it just sets a whole different set of parameters within the post. We can handle custom machine options. For instance, high frequency turning with star, low frequency machining uh, with citizen. We use this inside of each operation under the miscellaneous values, we can create all of these options that your machine may or may not have. Uh, some do, some don't. Uh, this example here of a star SR38 also shows that we can do balance cutting. Uh, there's a couple of different ways for balance cutting on a star SR38. Uh, and we'll look a little bit deeper into that uh, as we get into this uh, webinar. So, you know, if you're if you have a machine and, and you just don't see something that your machine can do, well, maybe it's hidden inside of a missed value or a custom parameter, or maybe we missed it and we just need to add it in. Just let us know and we can add and, and work on the code output. We've made some changes with our code editor. Code expert now can look at multi streams. It can look at head one and head two side by side, and we can align and synchronize our weight commands so that you can have a quick visual of weight codes or M codes that um, are utilized as weight commands. This is nice because you can quickly generate code and make sure your weight commands are where they're supposed to be and you don't have anything misaligned or out of place, saving you time at the machine, right? We get the, we get the code and programs running as close as possible at the computer saves us time at the machine. I'm going to go ahead and slide in a open session of Mastercam, and we're just going to look at a few things the way we would see it in Mastercam. We talked a little bit about lathe stock advance and the differences between the three machines. So I have set up here a Star SR38, a Citizen L32 Type 12, and a Sugami B0326 with a laser cutting attachment. If we go inside, uh, and look at the lathe stock advance for these machines, we can see that inside of lathe stock advance settings and custom parameters, we're looking at a citizen MC data setting, right? So we see all those same parameters that we saw on my slide. If we look at our Sugami with a laser, we go into our lathe stock advance and we see those settings as well. And then down here, this toolpath group is part of the STAR SR38, and we have those settings as well. And this one is actually the Sugami. That should have been the STAR. Uh, sorry about that. So we were talking a little bit about custom parameters or, or custom settings for um, pinch turning, balance turning. Any change that we do for Swiss happens inside of miscellaneous values and 
custom parameters. When I started this solution for Swiss machines, Corporate Masticam told me I could not change anything in the actual interface. I couldn't add a tab up here. I couldn't make a new toolpath group. I have to use what Lathe had, which we do. We just utilize our miss values and um, custom parameters. That's where we make all of our changes, okay? So if, if this was a part we were programming, and yeah, partially, uh, some of it is partially programmed, but let's go ahead and just to give you an idea about how similar it is to Mastercam Lathe, let's go ahead and add a facing op. We go up to our face operation under turning. We select a tool. I'm gonna select tool two as a turning tool. It's a 55 degree. We set our feed rates, our speeds. We can go up and change our face parameters. I'm gonna set my entry amount to 25 thousandths radially. And I'm going to set my retract amount to 50 thousandths. And I'm going to go ahead and green check. Now, if I go back and back plot this, here, here's our tool wrapping above the stock. It faces and comes off. Notice it faced just beyond the hole because it recognizes that there's going to be a hole there. No need to go past center because all of that material is going to be drilled away. Let's add. A spot drill. We go over to drill. We'll select a tool in station 11 as a stationary tool. We'll set our feed rate. We'll go into our spot drilling and we're going to use our depth calculator. We're going to tell it that we need to drill a finished diameter of 187. I'll overwrite that depth. Green check. It gives me the math of how deep I'm going to go. I'm going to turn off my clearance and set my retract to 50 thousandths. Go ahead and green check, and we'll back plot that. We'll see our spot drill rapid 50 thousandths away. Drill our hole just shy of our turned radius and retract out. So you get the idea, right? There's not a lot different than if you were programming a lathe machine. Now, People are going to wonder and ask, well, on a lathe, if I start at Z0 and I move to the left, that's a negative move on a lathe. On a Swiss, I'm feeding my stock out, that would be a positive move. We don't do any changes inside of the programming fields that you would use for lathe. We let the post switch all the signs the proper way. So if your machine moves the stock out towards the tool and that's a positive move, even though you're programming negative numbers, the post is going to swap that and make it positive. Again, I didn't want to confuse people when they're going from a lathe to a Swiss machine. Why not just program them both the same? Let the post do all the work for you. Looks like we had a dirty op there. One of the things that we don't have yet and it probably will not happen inside of Mastercam Lathe, but we don't have a full machine environment. We don't do full machine simulation. We do still use the back plot like I showed you, and we still use Verify where you see metal removal and you see one tool at a time. You just don't see the entire gang slide and the whole machine set up. Where I'm going uh, in the future of Swiss is because I'm I'm on the development team, I'm working with software developers we are working on a, a product for swiss moving into the mill turn environment where we will have machine environments this is a much longer term project uh, it's a very complicated uh, in-depth uh, type of project where it requires multiple people and multiple levels of of different departments so you know it's it's in the works it's been being worked on for the last uh, year or so. Um, so that's something to look forward to in the future. Uh, if we go back to slides, um, here's just a couple of slides showing examples of processed code right from the machine. Uh, so you have a star SR38 utilizing a G266 with all of its variables, you know, and 
maybe some of you say, well, I don't really need the explanations of all of these variables. I know what they do. Okay, we can modify the post and say, just don't output all of this um, explanations, right? We, we can modify these posts very quickly. MLC CAD has people on board who can modify these posts very quickly. And if you as a customer are familiar with editing MP post, you can modify your post very quickly. Um, showing a, a cutoff for a star with all of the proper sync codes where we have our M82 RPM sync waiting. We come in and we pick up the part on the sub spindle. We cut the part off and we're just flip-flopping back and forth between weight commands. Uh, Sugami SS38MH. This is a B-axis Swiss machine, um, kind of a high-end five-axis machine, a lot of different uh, settings because of the Five axis. Uh, this machine was proved out at Sugami uh, up in Chicago at one of their training offices where we actually cut apart and went through and proved out the post. Some true five axis code that was output. Uh, I think we ended up with about 180,000 lines of code for this one feature, but you can see XYZ, B, and C true five axis contouring. Again, showing you part pick off and cut off. Uh, example of a Citizen L20 encode expert showing you $1, $2, $0, your MC data side by side. Uh, just a nice quick visual of, you know, you're able to look at a program very quickly. And here's the list of current Swiss Post. Okay. Uh, this covers most of the Swiss machines out there. You'll s notice if you're familiar with Swiss machines, you're going to notice that there are no. Tornos machines. Tornos is a machine that at this time I have chosen not to do. Uh, there's multiple reasons for that. That doesn't mean we can't do it. We just don't do it through Mastercam. MLC CAD may be able to do it or another post developer may be able to create a post, but I have chosen not to do Tornos. I would say contact your local MLC CAD reseller, schedule a yeah. demo. They're probably going to ask me to jump in and Absolutely. I'll do you a demo or they might do a demo on their own. But if you if you want to see a personalized demo based on a part you're trying to run or a machine you're trying to do, future machine, um, let MLC know and we'd be more than happy to do a customized personal demo with you.